Welcome, everyone, to another fun-filled episode of Live With It. Daily Tech News Show has not done a live with it in some time now. Uh, many of us have been living with all sorts of technology, so we thought, what better time to bring it on back and who better to help us out with talking about his experience with a piece of technology than Rob Dunwood. Hello, Rob. What's going on, Sarah? Well, it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm just excited to hear more about this. And uh, selfishly, this is because what you're about to tell us about is something that I have been, I have been, I, I've had my eye on for a while um, as a podcast producer, as a, as a video producer, I suppose you could say. Um, this is, th this is um, it, a, something that could be a real boon for a home office. So tell us what you've got today. I picked up, and this probably probably had it for a couple of months now, the Elgato Prompter, which is a little itty bitty teleprompter that I now have mounted to my desk that is sitting in between one of my mini monitors and under my lights. And I just love this little thing. It is, it is, it's a piece of remarkable technology that Elgato came out with. It works different than a lot of other uh, teleprompters that people might be familiar with. But I never had one of the of the the real teleprompters, as some folks will call them. So this just works just fine for my use case. It it, it meets my needs. Now, for anybody who's like, what is a teleprompter? So a teleprompter is sort of an sort of an antiquated term, really, for um, a newscaster looking at the camera. Um, this is just one example, but an obvious one. Looking at the camera, telling you all of the news. You say to yourself, do they just know all of this stuff? Have they memorized their lines? No, it's a teleprompter that scrolls up um, slowly. Um, historically, was run by a teleprompter operator, a whole person who just had one job. Um, still happens sometimes, uh, depending on <laughs> where, where you're doing your news, um, that is helping you uh, with all of your facts. So people who are good at teleprompter reading, um, which Rob, you obviously are very good because I've never noticed anything otherwise, um, can kind of just rail off all sorts of stuff. You know, you can, you can, you know, recite an entire poem, a, a long, a long sonnet, anything. If you've got a teleprompter and, and it, um, scrolls correctly, people just think you're kind of magical. Yeah. And, you know, folks may, think you might be using a teleprompter, but the, the, the key is that it doesn't look like you're using a teleprompter. It looks like you're looking directly at the camera, which technically you are because the camera, uh, if, you th if you think of the physics of it, the camera sits literally behind the screen that you're looking at. So right. technically right. you are looking at it. You just, you're kind of just looking maybe uh, a few inches in front of your lens, but uh, to anybody watching, it looks like you're looking directly at them or directly at the screen. And I think that a lot of folks, and maybe, you know, sometimes it's hard to pinpoint why something feels slightly off. You'll see a YouTube video, for example, you know, and somebody is doing a lot of like, I'm talking to the audience, but they, their eye line is slightly off and you kind of, you're like, where are they looking? And this is usually because, um, and this is something that I struggle with on Daily Tech News Show um, or, you know, anything that I do at uh, the system that I'm sitting at right now, I don't have a teleprompter. So if I'm trying to look right at you right now, but mm -hmm. I have to read, I'm looking just under you. I try to match it up as good as possible. I'm also not trying to fool anybody into thinking that I have a teleprompter, but mm -hmm. to be able to look directly into to the camera can can resonate better with an audience. Yeah, you just you feel more connected when someone's looking at you. Be, be, think of just having a conversation with someone and they're sitting looking straight ahead when well, you're sitting, you know, to the left or the right, but they're not looking at you. They're just talking into the ether. It's kind of, a, you know, a jarring experience. So the teleprompter literally allows you to look at who you're talking to as you're talking. And in, in our case, if we need to read something, it, we're still looking at the screen when we're reading. Got it. Okay. So, all right. So let's talk about how, how the Elgato has been set up in your workspace. Um, and how the rest of us might, you know, consider using it ourselves. So when I first got it, I actually set it up on a tripod, like every other teleprompter that I've ever seen that was a personal, uh, you know, teleprompter. Uh, it was just set up on a tripod. But what I found is that my desk is 
fairly deep. So sitting in on a tripod on a ball head mount um, behind my desk was OK, except for it became kind of difficult to reach because it was even though I'm a tall guy with long arms, I would have to stand up to reach it, re, you know, reposition it. And that was just getting really annoying. So what I did was I actually went and got another thing from Elgato. It is the Elgato uh, mic arm LP, their low profile mic arm. And because the Elgato prompter is so light, I'm able to just sit this thing right on top of this microphone arm. And you can, if folks who are watching, they can see it in the picture there. And it gives me the ability to slide it in and out, change the angle without having to literally get up and walk around to the backside of my desk to get to a full tripod. Ah, got it, got it, got it. Um, okay. So, and this, this, I suppose, I don't know if you use a lot of different angles in your home office. Cause I always see you at this one. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, that, that would be a great way to be like, oh, you know, if I want to be looking this way, you know, my teleprompter is more or less, you know, on a, you know, a boom stand. So if you, if you're looking in that picture, you'll see a, a, a very light colored desk that the Elgato prompter is actually connected to, not the desk that, it, that, that I'm sitting at. There's another desk that is behind my desk. So one of the really nice things about this Elgato prompter on this Elgato mic arm LP is that when I work at my other desk where I'm generally standing up, I can just literally pull it around and turn it without having to, once again, go pick a whole tripod up and then use it. So changing the angles of this is is very very easy raising it up lowering it down turning it around when i want to use it at the other desk it is it is very very convenient for my use case okay so for for anyone saying sounds good i might have room for this i mean i am definitely in the market for this as well i've got a ring light i'm like would it kind of like fit maybe inside the ring light would it be in front of the ring light that would probably be like a lighting thing that you know your mileage may vary right well I've seen people who had it mounted inside of like a giant ring light, but this, you know, the, the specs on this, it is, it is a nine inch screen and uh, uh -huh. the device, it, it weighs about a pound and a half. So it's, it's not tiny, but it is very small for a teleprompter. So I wouldn't necessarily put it behind or, or in front of a ring light. I would, uh, you know, probably try to do a, you know, a bigger key light that could sit above Lights, it or yeah, behind it. Because yeah, if side. you put it in front of your ring light, you're going to be blocking light from the ring light unless you have a very large one where the diameter of the ring is larger than what the actual prompter would be. However, I have seen people use it in that configuration. So mileage may vary. Yeah. Okay. So for anyone saying, all right. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a creator. I want to use a teleprompter. Um, I've got my script, you know, whatever it is that you want, you know, the words that you're seeing as you're recording something to be in front of you. How do you get that from writing them down to the teleprompter? Is there an app or, you know, what's so the process there, there is an app. So you actually have to use a, a weird app. It's Elgato's camera hub app, which, uh, when you open up the actual camera hub app, there is a section in the app where you can actually copy and paste your script in. Now, this is one of the downsides of the software. Probably one of the biggest complaints of the Elgato prompter is that you can't import text from something else. You literally have to copy and paste whatever into, you want to be on the prompter the mm -hmm. into the app itself, which I'm going to be honest with you is a chore. So I find myself in many instances, just not using that part of it. A big reason that I wanted to get the Elgato prompter is because normally if I am doing a call with someone else, this is what it normally looks like. I'm looking off to a monitor where although I am talking, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm looking at them and you just see how my, my eyes are diverted from the main yeah, screen. It's just, yeah, it, there's right. some like discordance. So yes, yeah, so, so right you know, now, my, someone's like, well, hey, Rob, are you paying attention? You're like, yes, <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> so use case number one is just so that when I'm on Daily Tech News Show or what you know, I'm on the Tech John, I'm on SMR Podcast or whatever other show that I'm on, particularly when I am doing guest spots on other shows, I can actually look at the screen that I'm actually, uh, so, so it appears that I'm talking to the person and not looking through them or looking past them or looking away from them because I'm looking at another monitor. So that brings up one of the really cool things about the Elgato prompter that's a little different from other prompters or teleprompters. It is actually a monitor. 
So I can drag and drop, you know, to this thing, uh, just like any other monitor. It's a small monitor. It's only nine inches, but it is, it is a monitor. So I can put StreamYard right on top of the profiter. I can put, uh, you know, I can put Riverside.fm or whatever application, Zoom, whatever the case is, I can actually drag that application directly onto the prompter and look at whomever I want to look at. And that's something that's a little different than most teleprompters. Most teleprompters are just giving the ability to have text scroll back and forth. Yeah. This actually is a monitor uh, that shows up as, in my case, a fourth monitor in my display settings that I can actually drag and drop windows onto. And that was that was the thing that drew me to it most because I knew that I would be using it a lot when I'm not actually reading, but just trying to look at the people that I'm talking to when I'm on a call with them. Okay, so for um, for something like Daily Tech News Show, where, <laughs> spoiler alert, we do have a script, um, we do riff uh, a fair amount, but we have we have it we have a skeleton script that you know we try to stick to. Is that something that you're looking at in the Elgato, or do you just say no way too hard, and then you're so looking at you know me or Tom or Roger? I've tried it twice for DTNS. And the problem is that our script is, you know, we're, we're doing everything in Google Sheets. And because I would literally have to go and copy and paste everything over into this other thing. Oh, like each um, cell individually? Yeah, yeah. You, I would have to copy each cell over into the prompter. <laughs> and sounds, sounds it's just, it's, it's, it's a bit much. So my concern was when we've got a script that's that detailed where you literally have three, sometimes four different people who have parts of the script that they're reading. And you need to keep, you know, you need to keep track. It yeah. would be so much easier if I could just import the spreadsheet into Elgato. That, that ah. I guess it, hopefully they will come up with so that. Going as back a, to as the limitation update. of the software, mm -hmm. but the limitation of the software makes that difficult. Now I've heard that you can actually use third-party software with it, where you would be able to do something like that. Uh, I may decide to go and do that one day, but fortunately, uh, you know, for the shows that I'm on, the way that they're produced. When you're reading, there generally is something else up on the screen. So although the the audience may see a quick second of you looking away, usually they're looking at the thing you're talking about. They're looking at, uh, right. you know, a screenshot or looking at a video of the thing you're talking about. So it's just not that bad. But, you know, but what it really does is it gives, gives me the opportunity to like right now I'm looking right at you as I'm talking to you. And I would hope that it looks like I'm looking you know, relatively close to you. I actually have a little dot on my screen that's showing me where my, uh, where my camera, you know, is centered. So when I look at that, uh, yeah. hopefully that looks like I'm looking at you. Okay. So, so back to kind of how teleprompters traditionally work. Um, well, traditionally you had a teleprompter operator and sometimes, like I said, they exist often not, especially in a home studio. So how do you, um, DTNS, maybe not the best example of how this would work seamlessly, but let's say, let's say, you know, you're delivering a, you know, a five minute video, you're going to upload it to, you know, your socials, whatever. Um, how, how does that scroll? Are you controlling that? So there's a couple of ways you can scroll. I, um, I generally am using my mouse wheel, uh, on, on my, on, on my mouse to scroll up and down, but you can also use a, uh, you know, Elgato makes foot pedals where I could oh. actually put foot pedals on the floor and literally hit a left button to go uh, backwards and the right button to go forwards. Uh, you know, if you chose to do something like that, I don't think I need that for my use case. The, 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 the mouse wheel just looks, you know, fine. Like right now I'm literally just spinning it back and forth. You don't really notice that I'm doing it other than the fact that I just told you I was. Yeah. No, so, I wouldn't know. um, it also, because I do use a lot of Elgato products, I also have a stream deck. So one of the things is that when I want to change camera angles, because I do have multiple cameras, I can just go down and press a button. I can also change what I see. So because the Elgato prompter is a third monitor, you know, in, you know, um, in, in many cases, uh, what I do is I actually have program buttons on my teleprompter that allow me to switch back and forth in between when I am uh, in the screen where I want to actually read text on the screen or when I actually want my, you know, my video to show up. So I'm looking at myself as I'm talking. That's kind of cool because I literally don't have to look at anything. I just, I, I have buttons just, you know, pressed and I'm, I'm changing them right now. So you can't see it, but I'm actually changing what I see on my prompter. Right now I see my face. Right now I see the script. 
Uh, right now, I see my face. Right now, I see the script. So it changes very easily just by the press of a button on my mm. on my uh, stream deck. Huh? Would you consider getting the foot pedals? Um, I don't believe that I need them for my use case. Yeah. Um, but I, I I can't because I'm just not, I'm not doing that level of production. I can see where they would be beneficial. So if you've got someone, if, if, if you're like a newscaster and you're doing an entire broadcast, but you're doing it yourself, you know, you, you don't have that, that teleprompter operator. And maybe I have my camera angle where you actually can see my entire upper body and you can see my, you know, you know, my arms where you yeah. wouldn't want to see me moving around on a mouse. That's yeah. where those foot puddles will come in because I'm generally just doing talking head type videos. Um, you're only seeing, you know, the upper part of my chest to my <laughs> head. So you don't see my arms. Like, like, so right now I've got my mouse and I'm moving it around, but I don't think you notice that as I'm doing it. But if, you know, if you saw Not my hands up here, then yeah, I would go ahead and get those foot pedals. Yeah. And maybe it just, it has a lot to do with how, I don't know, we process information. I mean, some people might be like, don't bring my feet into it. <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> and other like people are like, I took piano this is good. Um, I used to work with, um, a, a, a reporter back in, uh, the early days of me working in local news who, um, would do his standups standups, basically meaning like, hi, I'm so-and-so, and I'm going to tell you about the car crash on 14th and mission. Um, mm -hmm. and he, um, he would not let anyone run his teleprompter for him. And so they got him a little wheel you know, this is again, very old school, but I think kind of what Elgato is doing to this day. Mm -hmm. And he just would always kind of like casually like roll it, you know, on the side, like it was, you were seeing most of his body and he's, uh, he somehow had a way to like have his teleprompter because he only trusted himself to run it specifically mm -hmm. for the way that he was going to talk, the way that his cadence was. And yeah, I think that that's, um, for anybody who is familiar with uh, teleprompter reading, it can be your best friend or it can throw you all the way off. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand why you would see that. We, we've seen it all the time, especially when it's something not necessarily a newscast because those folks are used to each other and they know how they work and operate. Yeah. But let's say it was like an award ceremony or, uh, you know, some, you know, the Emmys or something like that. And you've got somebody who's reading off the prompter and they'll say, Hey, slow down. I can't read that fast or speed up. I'm reading faster than you give yeah. me. You know, oh, give they're, me more oh, they're, they're, they're telling me to wrap up. Oh, you know, and you're like, what? Yeah. Who? It's like, it's all yeah. teleprompter. It, exactly. So I, I could see that if I, if you were seeing more of my upper body, those would be something that I would actually uh, think about. But for, you know, for me, the mouse wheel is just fine. Also, uh, there is a, you know, there are multiple versions of stream decks out there. There's one version that actually has knobs on it for like volume and stuff like that, but those knobs are programmable. So you could actually have a knob to where you just twist the knob, um, right. And it'll go, it'll scroll down. You twist it back to the left. It'll go back up. So there's, you know, Elgato has a lot of little devices that allow you to control the rest of their devices pretty effectively. So I think I would probably go to something like that before I would go to the foot pedal just because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like me, you know, just, you know, hitting, hitting a pedal when I could just scroll with my finger, I, I'd rather just do that. That, but that is just a personal preference for me. So let's talk about price. So this is $280, not including, you know, add-ons like foot pedals. Um, right. But uh, out of the box, do you think that that is a, is a, is a solid price for the value that you're getting? I think so. So I, I know when it first came out, a lot of people are saying that's, it's a little expensive for a nine inch teleprompter, but almost every other teleprompter that I saw that was significantly less expensive than this by maybe a hundred dollars or more. They did not include the screen that would be that you would be looking at. So you actually had to supply your own tablet or your own phone yeah. to mm -hmm. the prompter, load software on that, and then um, you know add that cost in. I didn't want to deal with that, which is one of the reasons I've kind of shied away from, from you know, for a while. It's like, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to go spend, you know, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars to get one of the big, nice teleprompters because I didn't think I would use it enough. But I didn't want to go with one of the lower end ones where I would have to use my own phone to actually, you know, be the software. So when this came out, it actually includes its own screen and it is a relatively low, you know, relatively low resolution screen. But for what I'm doing, 
it works just fine. So I, I think, you know, the sub $300 price range that they have, I, th I think it's like $279.99. I think it works pretty well. Um, all right. So uh, it sounds like you've, you've figured out your use case for this. Um, is there anything besides the software? And obviously we talked a little bit about depending on your light setup, you know, for, for example, my uh, ring light that is right in front of me right now, probably would be weird. I'd have to, you know, uh, re rejigger some stuff um, in my office, but anything besides the software that you would not recommend about the Elgato? So w one of the things that kind of bothers me about this, as I said, it is a third monitor, um, but there's two different ways you can have it set up as a third monitor. When you actually are going through the Elgato software, and you're able to switch between the teleprompter mode um, and the uh, you know and the just screen mode, and it also is like a chat mode. So if you're using this for like Twitch chat and stuff like that, you can actually switch switch over to your Twitch chat. There's mm -hmm. a specific mode for that. If you are using that, it's fine. But when you're not using your teleprompter, that software still has to run. So you can turn the screen off. But what you will notice is that there's a little bit of delay when you slide between your screens because even though the software has the monitor turned off is you know the computer still believes there's a monitor there so oh, i actually have I my yeah i have my prompter in between my two main monitors so even when it is turned off um or i should say when it is turned off and i scroll my mouse there's a little bit of delay before i get you know from one screen to the next and that's kind of annoying um, particularly when I would say that I don't use my teleprompter most of the time. It's only when I'm on air, only when I'm recording. So sure, that is yeah. maybe 10, 15 percent of my total computer time during the day. So, uh, I, you know, so what I like to do is I actually will turn the prompter off and then unplug it. And because I have it on this little uh, this this mic arm, this low profile mic arm, I will just push it out of the way. And then slide my monitors back, you know, back together because I've got my laptop is sitting on a uh, on a mic arm as well. So I can mm -hmm. slide my laptop back over and just bump it up right next to my other monitor. And I don't even notice that that Elgato, uh, excuse me, that Elgato prompter is there. So there are a few steps I've got to jump through to do that. I've actually got to, I use a PC, so I've got to go into my PC, you know, display settings and actually turn the monitor off in the settings so that the computer is no longer aware of it. And now when I scroll from, from monitor to monitor that's actually turned on, it's instantaneous like it normally would be. So it's not the end of the world, but it's, it's not the end of the world. It's just that for my use case, because I don't use it most of the time, I actually don't just turn it off in software. I physically disable it in Windows so that it's, 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 it's not there at all. And then I just push it out of the way as though it was it was never there, which is another uh, great reason to actually put it onto a boom arm. Yeah. New joke. Um, reminder to anyone who might be in the market for this. Um, you mentioned uh, using a PC for this particular setup. Um, what what uh, what does the Elgato come with? You know, let's talk cables. Let's talk ports. How does it connect? Well, there's only one plug. There's just a USB C plug on the back. That's the only port that's on here. So you're going to be plugging USB C into something. Um, you know, whether it be your Mac or your PC or port replicator or wherever the case is. Uh, you know, but once you do that, your machine just recognizes it as a monitor and it's very, very quick to set up. The prompter does come with a fair amount of equipment in the box. The reason for this is that it gives you the ability to literally put any type of camera behind the screen. So I've got my mm. Sony ZV-1, which is a uh, you know is a zoom mount fixed frame camera, but it's got a nice sensor on it, so I look pretty good for for what I'm doing here. At least I hope I do. Oh yeah. Um, but I could put like I've got like a you know a Sony FX30. I've got a Sony AS7 III. I could put any one of those cameras on this prompter as well. So the way that I have it set up right now, there's actually a little deck on the back. So if you have a small camera or you have a point and shoot camera or you're using a iPhone or you know an Android device as your camera, there's a little shelf that you can mount your uh, you know you know mount your Whoa. camera to and just sit it right behind the monitor. But if you're using a higher end camera that has a uh, you know a, a really nice lens on it, because the prompter is so light, it's only about a pound and a half. I think it's 690 grams. Because it's so light, you can attach it directly to many 
uh, of your lens mounts or your, of your lenses that would actually, you know, go on your camera yeah. because it's so light. So it, it is it is much lighter than like a big telephoto zoom lens. So one of the cool things is that Elgato provides you with literally a box of step up rings where you just determine the size that you need that fits your lens. And you can actually attach the prompter directly to your camera without having to sit it on a shelf and then use like a hood, to, you know, to keep the light out. It, you know, it literally would be the the lens it's mount going in right one. into the back of the prompter, which yeah. is pretty cool. Okay, so um, I know that you and I, for the most part, <laughs> you and I and many other people, um, we, you know, we uh, we've got home offices, home studios, um, not you know packing up uh, every day. But in the event that you do have to go remote, would you pack this up and bring it with you? Um, it depends. If I were going, let's say, because I've done this before, if I were going to like a hotel where we were going to record an entire half a season or an entire season of a show yeah. and I needed to use a teleprompter for that level of work and production, I take it. Um, but it would have to be that level of production. Um, Not if, for just I, if I'm like just a one off type. Thing. Yeah. For like a one off. It, it's it's a big much because it's not just the prompter. I've got to pack up the prompter. I've got to pack up the, in my case, my boom arm. If I were going remote, I probably yeah. would just take my, you and know, you one of my tripods like, from my is camera. The boom arm going to even be connected to yeah. on the other side. Yeah. And, I've got yeah. to disconnect it from my camera. I've got to take the, you know, so, so there is a fair yeah. amount of work. Now, I don't want to make it seem like it's going to be 11 hours to set the thing up. It probably takes you 10 minutes to set it up once you know what step up ring or if you're going to use the shelf, if you're using a point and shoot camera or an iPhone, but there is setup. So for, for me, one of the, one of the main reasons I got this is because when I started doing daily tech headlines last year, uh, that is just a solo show where it's just me talking into a microphone. I thought, well, I, maybe I want to record this, but when I record it, it looks horrible because I am literally reading the entire script. I never look at the screen until, you know, you know I'll, I'll say my name and then I'll say goodbye. And those are the only time you actually see my eyeballs. <laughs> so um, for a show like that, it just made sense to get it because I can actually have my entire script, which I do use, and I can record it and actually have a video of that if I ever wanted to use that for social media or, or something like that. Yeah. So if I was doing that type of show and it just made sense that I would carry something with me. Um, this would probably be it because it is so light, but it is not a small box. Um, I, I think you have a, a picture of the box that it comes in. It is because it is a teleprompter and everything is built. It's, it's just one piece. That box is quite large. I wouldn't want to, you know, you know, walk around with that. So if I were going to be in a situation where I need to use a, a small teleprompter often, but remotely, I might think about one of those ones where you actually do use your what, phone yeah. because like they're just so much smaller global. and you can break them down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, well, Rob, <laughs> I mean, thank you for putting in so much work. Uh, I feel like I know a lot more about something that I've been on the fence about purchasing for myself. Um, I guess as we wrap up uh, this episode of Live With It, what uh, what are your final thoughts on the Elgato? I mean, I it sounds like you you recommend it. Um, I and actually do. There's, I, there's I, some I, drawbacks, I, but yeah, yeah like I, final thoughts. I, I really do like it, and um, f if you do not have a lot of space, this is perfect because once again, if you mount it on a like a mic arm, you can just push it out of the way when you're not using it, as long as you have a little bit of space behind your desk or behind your monitors. Um, for me, it, as an improvement. I would like to see this go from a nine inch version to maybe a 13 to 15 inch version because it, because it is a monitor. If it were a 15 inch monitor, that's the size of my laptop. I would just leave it up as a monitor all the time. Yeah. Um, as compared to pushing it out of the way and then using it. So that would be something that if they made a bigger version of it. And if I, you know, I, I don't see any reason I need to update this, but if, if they were to have a bigger version now using it, like I use it, I would say, ah, let me get the bigger version and just leave that as a third monitor or fourth monitor there all the time. But because it's such a small monitor, relatively low resolution, I, when I'm not using it, I push it out of the way. So that's, that's just one thing that I would like for it. But uh, it, it, it works fine. It, it does what it does. Like I said, it, you know, they need to do some work on the actual teleprompter software itself. But outside of that, it's an excellent piece of hardware. 
Well, Rob Dunwood, thank you so much for doing the hard work and letting us all know um, how it has been going for you. And I, you know, selfishly, <laughs> I really wanted this review because I'm like, do I want to spend $280 on something else? Um, but uh, it sounds like for a small office person, as I am, might be the right call. Um, when you're not on us with uh, Daily D Tech News, uh, show and obviously daily tech headlines. Where can people keep up with your work? You can find me over at the techjohn.com. That is the tech J A W N, where myself, Nika, Nika Mofford, Nika Mofford is one of our guest hosts who also is on Daily Tech News Show as a contributor, but Terrence Gaines, who's also on Daily Tech News Show as a contributor. And then, uh, you know, so Terrence Gaines on the show, and we also have. Uh, Tech Life Humphrey. staff, Stephanie Humphrey, who is also a contributor on Daily Tech News Show. So it seems like there is a there's a theme here when it comes to the tech job. But what you will get with that show is we actually talk about tech from a little bit of a different perspective. We talk about how it affects and disaffects communities of color, specifically African-Americans. Well, uh, it's a good show, by the way. Um, it's my favorite one of my favorite uh, weekend shows to, to walk to um, because I like walking and I like podcasts and I like all of you. But if you enjoy Live With It, and again, we've been a little dormant for a while, but we're back, baby. Uh, please remember, we can only do shows like this one with your continued support for us on Patreon. This is a Patreon thing that we offer our patrons uh, before anybody else gets it. We want to do more of these. So thank you to all of you who support us. We could not do it without you. Go to patreon.com slash DTNS if you're listening and would like to know more. Until next time, what will we review next? We don't know yet. Uh, maybe you have some ideas. Uh, email us, feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. I'm Sarah Lane, and this was Live With It. And thank you again, Rob. <laughs> <laughs>